Mind Control in America dot com. Stephen Jacobson. All media is propaganda. All of it. It's a great quote. Well, it, it's it's true, and the mind control issue has been with us for a very, very, very long time. It's an ancient problem because mankind has been subjected to manipulation and control. We were born into a system of lies and deception right from the get-go, and so were our parents born into the same kind of situation that many people accept as being the way things are simply as the result of habit and consider it natural and normal, and it's anything but that. The basic, very simple control of information throughout our lives uh, if we don't have all the facts on any given issue, our judgment can only be as good as the quality of our information. And if we've been fed half-truths and lies and missing information, then we are at a disadvantage. Two means by which we are con uh, manipulated and controlled. One is the control of information. The consolidation of ownership of the media facilitates that and allows for the coordination of different media uh, as part of a uh, propaganda campaign. Right now, all media is controlled by a handful of multinational corporations. Back in 1980, a book came out, uh, The Media Monopoly by uh, Ben Bedickian. At that time, it was revealed that 50 major corporations were controlling America's media. And as the book was revised, the new editions came out, that number kept getting smaller and smaller until now we have five major multinational companies that are controlling not only the information we have access to, but the entertainment choices. The trick is to change the state of mind to disarm it, to take its defenses down or otherwise modify them so they're no longer very efficient and a material can go right into the subconscious without any kind of interference, judgment, or processing. Plunk right in. All right, Stephen, the techniques used to put the mind or the consciousness into an altered state, take it from beta down through alpha in, into theta, uh, so it's mesmerized, and when it's in that state, and it's usually the old, the old television flicker, Although with HD, I'm not sure the flicker is still there anymore. What it would do, it would, in a matter of seconds, like the first time takes about a minute, but after that it's just seconds, put the mind into a state where anything it was absorbing would simply go right past all filters and into the subconscious and, and wait there to be called up when the proper stimulation was encountered. Tell us more. Yes, that's absolutely correct. The, the the most successful propaganda uses the arts and entertainment as a delivery system. And, and television is a good example of explaining both the principles of hypnotic programming as well as the techniques. I'd say that television is by far the most powerful weapon of psychological warfare in history. And I consider that so important and yet, many people, if not most, don't think of television in those terms as a weapon. How, how people think of television as simply an elective choice in terms of entertainment and information, when in point of fact, the television is the boss. Yes, and it's illustrating how we are taught what's right and wrong, what's acceptable and unacceptable behavior, to storytelling. Storytelling is the oldest means of transmitting information about how society works. There isn't much difference between primitive man sitting fixated in front of the flickering light of a campfire, telling stories about how things work, transmitting information from one generation to the next. Not much difference between that and modern man sitting fixated in front of the flickering light of a television, receiving information, the same kind of information, how society works what's acceptable and unacceptable behavior, what's right and wrong. The first order of business for a propagandist or an advertiser is to create the circumstances that are going to induce a state of mind that is most favorable to the reception of their message. That state of mind is the hypnotic state of mind. The 
state of mind, natural. We go in and out of it throughout the day. It's a twilight state of mind in which there is no conscious mental activity going on. The mind is a blank slate, and it is in this state of mind where we are highly suggestible and more vulnerable to manipulation than at any other time. Television induces this state of mind in the viewer naturally and automatically because of the nature of the medium. And we can even catch ourselves when we're in front of a TV going into that state uh, of losing our sense of time and place. We're simply there. We're soaking up information like a sponge. The, the television is literally plugging into our nervous system. It's a literal uh, interfacing of the electronic media with our nervous system. Back in uh, the late 1990s, 700 children had to be hospitalized in response to watching a TV cartoon. This happened in Japan. Japan, yep, I the, remember. The cartoon yeah. was the, the highly popular Pokemon. Pokemon. The press all over the world reported on this incident. Well, what happened was that strobing uh, flashes of light pulsated from the eyes of one of the cartoon characters. And this caused epileptic-like seizures. Hold and on, Stephen. Hold on, would you please? We have to pause right there. We'll come back. Stephen. Okay, we're talking to you about things that control you, not necessarily through conversation or the auditory vector, but through the eyes. And then the ears second, but it's the eyes that tend to lead you, although music is quite compelling in its own cadences as well. It's an, it's an all-fronts assault on you to disarm you and make you amenable to all kinds of input, which they design ever so carefully. Nothing is really left to chance. Stephen, please go ahead. Regarding children and television, prior to the advent of TV, you never heard about attention deficit disorder. Didn't Maybe. exist. Nope. nope. And what's happening here is that the quick cutting patterns that were developed in TV commercials and music videos they cause a, a corresponding chemical electrical impulse in the brain. And that releases endorphins that have a drug-like effect on the body. So a child can sit motionless, fixated, watching television. And when they're away from the television, they have all this nervous energy, can't focus their attention, can't sit still. And that's because they're looking for the same kind of drug-like effect that they're getting from TV and other kinds of activities, and they're not getting it. Another illustration right. of this plug-in effect that television has with our nervous system, because we've already been changed as a population by the illustration of hypnotic programming, using, for a, another example, the news broadcast that everyone is grown familiar with, both your national news and your local, local news broadcaster. If you think about it, regardless of the background of the newscaster, regardless of their ethnic background, whether they be black, white, oriental, Hispanic, doesn't matter. With few exceptions, they all speak the same way. They have a pattern of speaking that the public has been conditioned to accept as the means by which we receive true factual information. The newscaster looks directly into the camera and into the eyes of the viewer, which is another hypnotic technique. The newscaster is an authority figure, which is uh, another element. People will tend to accept information, even if they don't understand it, if it is coming from an accepted and respected authority, and then the information repeated over and over and over again until it becomes a conditioned response. This not only happened in the days of television, but even before television, mm -hmm. in the radio. The famous broadcast of Orson Welles' uh, dramatization of H.G. Welles' War of the oh, Worlds uh, caused panic yeah. in this country. No, oh, classic. Yes, uh, people actually thought New Jersey was being invaded by Martians. Well, I would have if I'd have been back there then. I, I well, was done very the realistically. The reason for it was that the dramatization was done as a news broadcast. Yeah, and news and even then was considered hallowed ground in terms of questioning it. I mean, that was the oracle of God news. Yes, and, and, hold and on. it shows that even then 
the population had been programmed and conditioned to accept the format as the as the means by there which we receive true factual information. Exactly and, right. Uh, and yeah. it just wasn't so. Isn't it amazing the amount of sophisticated, absolutely complete control that they're they're working toward now, cradle to grave. Well, yeah. that, it only shows their one, their paranoia, and their fear. Correct. They're afraid they, they, of us. They have fear too. You see, they keep us entrained and entranced uh, via fear, anxiety, anticipation, and all the rest of those related synonyms. And yet, on the other side of the coin, they themselves are driven by fear that we might become out of control. And wake up. Right. And that's what they're trying to prevent. The, and, and that's essentially a, a spiritual condition. The mind control issue is first and foremost a spiritual issue. It, its foundation is spiritual. The, the mind is the gateway to the soul. That's why there's mind control issue. And we, in mass, humanity is at the threshold of an awakening that they seek to prevent. Because if people wake up, wake up means uh, come into an awareness, a spiritual a realization. Because that's the only thing that's going to solve the problems that we face. Uh, they're, they're just very so basic and fundamental. We're not going to fix things with Band-Aid measures, trying to tinker here and there and fix the economy. You're not going to fix the economy without attending to the issue of uh, honest weights and measures and, and, and honest uh, uh, medium of exchange as the uh, life blood uh, of uh, of commerce uh, the dishonest money system has corrupted all segments of society including organized religion which is part of the problem this is a, a, a the mind control issue is a spiritual issue and the fundamental problem for mankind is that we have been encouraged to misidentify ourselves as the physical body and when people do that then they become fearful because the body is subject to death and by keeping people afraid and stressed out uh, and great anxiety for long periods of time is a strategy of, of psychological warfare because then people can't think clearly. Uh, Add to this the manipulation of economic factors and you have a twin pencil movement where the population is literally being squeezed. The, the nation mm -hmm. is suffering from the effects of a scientifically induced nervous breakdown. That's what we're seeing all around us. We are the first media generation so that caused a, a psychological standardization that later was fragmented. And so that uh, different groups can be spoken to uh, individually and programmed individually. The real issue, it's a spiritual issue. And spiritual consciousness is the only solution to the problems and suffering of material existence. And it's on that platform where we have our power because it requires us to look within for the answers. And that's the only way we're going to find them. We've been conditioned to look outside of ourselves for the answers and to use our mind in an analytical way to, to think our way out of a problem. Right. Thinking got us into this mess. It and, sure did. And that the quality of our thinking has to change. We haven't been taught how to think. We've been taught what to no. think. And yep. God forbid that we learn how to think because that's what these guys are are afraid of. Uh, there are more of us than there are of them, and the only way can, they can control and, and manipulate the large masses is through illusion and deception. And they it's like the, the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. Exactly. And the cultivation of, of this anxiety and fear is astoundingly profitable. Look at the psychopharmacological maniacs at work coming up with these fluoride-based drugs, SSRIs, all kinds of psychotropic medications, which literally, if the television and the lifestyle and the peer pressure and the media and the self-absorption and the narcissism of the physical body doesn't do it, these drugs will. And they'll seal the individual uh, permanently into a, a crypt of morose behavior and absolute obedience obedience to a paradigm that is antithetical to human life as it used to be.